Happy Earth Day, everybody. Let's talk about some green. What is it they used to do the, before you went on stage? You sang the. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Renewed Homestead. Ben and Denise here. And yeah, we're going to talk about green, but not this kind of green. Let's talk about some green energy. And, uh, you know, so it's Earth Day, and we thought, well, this is a good opportunity to, to just share some thoughts about green energy because, you know, we seem to be on this drive to get everybody in an electric car and no more wood burning stoves and no more gas heating of any sort but really and don't please don't tune this out because green energy is not as green as you think and we just want to bring up some points that you really ought to think about when the conversation comes up and should we should you be using it you know what what are the the downsides of it so. yeah and we're we're not opposed to alternative energies. We actually think we ought to be investing in technology. And this is not going to be a documentary. It's not going to be, you know, a really in-depth look. These are just um, um, just kind of an overhead view of things that we think you, you should think of. We're not opposed to solar at all, um, but we don't want to use solar because we think it's better for the planet. We like solar from the standpoint that it makes you a little more self-sufficient and you're not connected to the grid. So for that purpose, um, you know, but uh, it's in a lot of ways, green energy is far worse for the environment than uh, oil. How dare you! <laughs> so, how dare how you! How dare you! Regretta <laughs> Van, what's her name? Thunberg. Thunberg. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, anyway, so, um, you know, let's talk about solar for just a moment. I was talking to my daughter about it and she was looking at solar options for her new house, which congratulations, by the way, she's moving into a brand new home, her first home home. And congratulations, today. Hope. Today. today, yes. As long as the movers showed up today. Right. <clears throat> they were supposed to be there yesterday. Anyway, but she was talking about doing solar and I said, well, you know, and she made the point, well, that way if things got bad, I'd still have electricity. I'm like, well, depends on your setup. If you don't have a, a battery bank to that you, something that you're charged up, if you're just tied to the grid, they're down, you're down, whether you're bringing in energy or not. So just quick point, I just thought I'd throw that out there. But. Yes. Well, and the average, so, so oh. let's just take a look at the panels themselves and then we'll go into the battery. All right. So solar panels last about 30 years, um, give or take, right? We have well over 2 million solar panel installations um, since 2019. We know that's that's gone. Um, we know the number's gone even higher now, but we know there's over 2 million um, installations now. We know the government's been pushing green energy and solar panels, right? Well, what happens after 30 years? All right, so we, there's really no incentive to recycle. A lot of these are ending up in the landfill. Um, and then we have a whole nother issue that comes with the toxic chemicals that are leaking out of the solar panels that are going back into our soil. Um, it, that's a big deal. And right now we don't really have a solution in this country or in many countries. I know some states like Washington and Utah are trying to put programs in place where people can drop off panels but oftentimes uh, they're sitting in landfills or, or they're sitting there um, and then we have to worry about what is um, coming off of these panels, right? And, and we know there's been a lot of insulation over the last 10 to 15 years. So about another 10 to 15 years, now we really have a huge issue with waste and that's just for the panel. That doesn't even include the battery. Yeah, and, and you know we don't like to present a problem without some kind of a solution. We don't have one for this. And and the, the solar panels, they don't just stop working necessarily. They just stop charging up as much. So, you know, when they're brand new, they charge up 100% over time. You know, from what I understand, they get down to like, you know, maybe 20% efficiency and, you know, just doesn't run very well. So then, then what do you do with those panels? Yes, and then you're done. Yeah. Um, and then the batteries themselves last about five to 15 years. 
years. <laughs> I, I, I'm laughing because you're we're probably wiggling a little there. The, the breeze, I can see my camera moving a little bit there. Sorry. <laughs> it's a breezy day. It's, it is it's, a windy it's, day. It's a welcome relief. It is. It's Ooh, been really hot. It's, it's a beautiful day today. Um, but the batteries last five to 15 years. So again, we have all of these issues with waste. And again, there's really no solution for the batteries, just as the issue with the solar panels, right? Um, and that's just, these are just basics, guys. I mean, we could delve into this at great length, but we don't want to make it three hour long video. No, we don't want to put you to sleep. <laughs> right, right. Um, and then windmills, I mean, of course, even the EPA admits that windmills are the least power efficient of all alternative energies. Uh, this, I, I, this I better movement. stop you from wiggling. Hold on a second. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up if that works. <laughs> Okay, sorry, we'll, we'll stop doing this now. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it wasn't too bad. No, I don't think it was. So, all right, so we know windmills. Um, we also have the issue of waste with the windmills and uh, the things that go into the windmill. And what happens oftentimes when a windmill stops working? It blows up. No. They bury it. They bury it. Now, I did see a company, and I think it was Germany, they were turning some of these windmills into playgrounds for kids, but... How many playgrounds are they going to build? So. Well, yeah, and there's some. There are some countries that are taking used windmill parts, right? I believe Germany's doing it, but there's there's hard, there's not enough countries. It's very pricey and very convoluted to remove it from one it's, country to another. And it's just cheaper for them to dig a big hole and bury them. And, and that's and that's essentially what's happening, right? And and these are just j just the recycling aspect of it. There really is no capacity to recycle. Yep. Um, and then, <laughs> but there, but out of a problem, as Billy would say, there's opportunity. So if any of you have a creative idea for those windmills, That's you true. know, whether you take, take them off and, and build a, a solarium with the, you know, build a, cover your roof with them or something. I don't know. I don't That's know. for you to decide. That's true. Opportunity <laughs> knocks. Opportunity knocks. Yes. Anyway. So I keep interrupting. Yes. Well, no, but then, but, but then you, all these alternative energies, right? Well, what goes into them? And if you look at the rare earth metals and the minerals that go into them and then how we get them, this is where things get really dicey yes. with green energy. Yeah. So and those are some stats you're gonna have to read. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, the, these, yeah, I can't, I can't remember. This is just, okay, so, well, yeah, that's actually a good point. I wanted to bring up the solar waste Right. Um, and this is according to the EPA again. Now, please don't don't tune it out. I know I know this is like uh, more stats. It's like being sitting back in high school, but it's important. And if you haven't really looked into this, just yeah. listen for a couple minutes here. All right. So by 2050, just for solar waste, right? United States, they're predicting 10 million tons. Germany, three million tons. China, 20 million tons. Japan, seven and a half million tons, and India, seven and a half million tons. That's just solar waste. That doesn't even include the windmills. Right. Right? Yep. And then as we talked about with these rare earth metals, you need lithium, you need um, neodymium, you need cadmium, right? Um, I don't know if y'all have looked into how they mine for these rare earth minerals, um, and we don't have an, uh, just uh, an ending supply lane somewhere. Right. There, that we only have so much of these rare earth metals. That's why they're called rare earth metals, yep. right? There's chemicals to leach it out of rock and massive trucks to to bring them up out of the earth. Well, and all those massive mining equipment, right? Yep. Require what? Diesel. Diesel fuel. Mm -hmm. yep. And if you've ever looked, <laughs> if you ever checked out, or if you've not ever checked out a, a mining operation. Um, what is the great big one down there in southern Arizona? Billy was just out there. I can't remember the name, but I know which one you're talking about. Uh, is that the copper a, mine? Yeah, it's a giant, yeah. giant copper mine. I mean, this thing, this thing makes the Grand Canyon look puny. And of course, the games, right? Always. They were completely quiet until we started recording. Hey. 
But anyway, these, these massive trucks, they, the guys, if you have not seen this, they actually take climb ladders to get up into the cab to drive these things. They're that big and that much diesel. And Hundreds of gallons of diesel fuel. Thousands. Yeah, well, I would say just like in an hour, right? Yeah. A couple of hours you're yeah. going through. Yeah, so you've got all that diesel pollution going into the air to get the copper out. Well, let's talk about well, to get Well, yeah, to get yeah. the neodymium and the cadmium and the lithium mm -hmm. and all these other, yeah. Yeah. But they don't use big trucks for the lithium. What do you mean? Don't they use uh, little, little oh, well, hammers? Well, um, in a lot of these mining um, operations, I guess we can say, they use slave labor and most of it's child slave labor. So that's just... Fact check false. Fact check true. <laughs> It is true. It is true. It is true. So not only are we using massive amounts of diesel fuel, massive equipment to dig out these um, metals, we're also using child slave labor to do it, right? Um, and then you wanted to go into copper. Yeah, well, like the copper, and I could not find the stats again. I saw one that was talking about the amount of copper it takes to to produce an electric car versus a regular combustion engine car. And it was, was it four times as much copper? It was, it was significantly yeah, more than that. But it was talking specifically about Britain and saying to replace all the cars there, it would take something like 30% of the entire world's copper, available copper. Well, that's over there. So I did some quick calculations and said, okay, well, they've got, you know. However many people. Yeah, however many cars are on the road, say 3 million. And I took that and I said, okay, well, if that took 20%, I ran the numbers of how many cars we have here in America. And to replace every car here in America with an electric car, it would take up, it was almost 120% of the world's available copper just for America. Yep. Forget everybody else. So, you know, yes, copper is recyclable, but there is expense and chemical waste and all kinds of things just to re Well, and how copper. much water goes into recycling mm -hmm. copper and other items? There is a lot of water that goes into this. Yeah, those chemicals leach into the water, and where does that water go? Into the water table, which where does that pull up into? Your faucet. So you can see, I mean, you can go down a huge rabbit hole. Oh, that's this. that's it. And we, we said we, we started, you know, kind of bantering back and forth about this. And it's like, you know, if we go into all the details, we're going to put people to sleep. So we wanted to hit it high level and give you some things to think about on this wonderful Earth Day. Yes. And according to Forbes, I wanted to read this quote. Um, Electric vehicle sales projections pose challenges for copper supply with a 10 million metric ton deficit possible by 2035, according to estimates. And you guys, this doesn't even include the aluminum. This doesn't include the chromium or the zinc, the other minerals that are needed. So and we're going to take a quick time out. Sorry, we had a delivery and Loki wanted to eat the driver. He didn't want to eat the driver. He was no, just he likes, the, he likes the driver. He actually driver. likes our FedEx driver a lot. Well, he brings little milk bones for him. So. <laughs> yes. He's, Loki's he not him. above bribery. No, he is not. He is not. So where did we leave off? Uh, well, I think... We should probably talk about the solar station, or the, not the solar, the charging stations, Charging right? stations, yeah. I mean, you've not seen that in the news lately, and most of the news doesn't care yet. There's long lines to get to a charging station to charge up your electric vehicle. That's in California, right? That's in California, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there's other places where it's not bad, but hey, you follow that uh, charging station, what's it hooked up to? Regular... Up to you the know, grid. <laughs> up, up to the grid, which is powered by, you know, either diesel or coal, coal or, or nuclear. Right. Or nuclear. Nuclear, yes. <laughs> nuclear. <laughs> so, so, but they're, they're literally charging their cars by the same process that they're saying is killing the environment. I mean, there are, there are technologies out there that are getting better. And like we said, we, you know, we're not opposed to alternative fuels and things like that. I, you know. The cleaner we can be, the better for the environment, obviously, and, and, and we totally agree with it. And the, the companies, there's some uh, lithium iron batteries being built, which have a lot longer life. Well, and, you're talking about the salt water, right? Yeah, well, and then there's a, a gel a gel battery that's, long, that's much better technology than what we had, you know, even 10 years ago. But yeah, the military has used 
a version of salt water for their batteries, but these things are massive. I mean, they're the size of a Prius from what I understand, but they're, you know, they're, they're using that technology and trying to scale it down to something a little more user friendly. Then it's salt water. You, how do you recharge salt water? You, you, you dump it and recharge it with, with fresh salt from what I understand. So, yes. you know, wastewater is what rolls up on the ocean beaches. So. So, so we are all for coming up with better alternatives. Yep. It's just, uh, we're pushing this green energy. It isn't green. And I, I'm going to be, I do not like Michael Moore <laughs> at all, <laughs> but, and I never thought I'd think I had anything, you know, our, our belief system would align at all with Michael Moore, but he has actually talked about this very thing. So there are people trying to bring awareness to this, but green energy isn't green y'all. And when you follow the money. <laughs> yep, that's the, so let's get to the crux of it. Why is there this, this push, 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 push? Because when I was a kid, the, the cover of what Life Magazine was, we're, we're entering another ice age. We're going to freeze over. The polar ice caps are expanding. We're all going to freeze to death. Well, then we're then, all going to flood. Then, then, we're, then, we're fl then the ice caps are melting. We're going to flood. And, you know, Florida is going to be underwater and Arizona will have an oceanfront property. And then we're getting too hot. <laughs> yeah. So wait a minute. We can't, you know, we're, we're, we're juggling this narrative and well. Well, well, didn't Greta Thunberg in 2018 say that we're going to we have had, serious consequences in five, five years. years. So yeah. that's why she's now Regretta Van Thunberg. Yes. Regretta. Yes. Regretta. <laughs> Regretta that tweet, which she pulled down, by the way. She took that tweet down because yes. she was wrong. But anyway, my point. You know, go back and look at old pictures of the, uh, the the Statue of Liberty. It's no no deeper in the water than it was. So they can't sell the narrative or heating or too, cooling all that. So now it is just blank climate change. And again, why are we there? I'm sorry, I went the long way around to get to this point. Why are we there? Because if you look, most, if well, I won't say all, but a good portion of our politicians here in America and worldwide, that are, are push that are pushing this. that are pushing this are shareholders in these companies yeah look at a lot of the people especially in the european um commission european union mm -hmm. um yeah and then people yeah. politicians here in america mm -hmm. they own a lot of stock in those companies yeah. follow the money mm -hmm. as always mm -hmm. yeah and there's there's something that we we had calculated this we had looked up the emissions between like a chevy impala and a tesla and I'm gonna put this on the screen. But this was a couple of years ago that we had calculated this. But so if you take a Chevy Impala traveling about a thousand miles, uses about 40 gallons of gasoline or so. But when you take a Tesla Model T traveling that same amount, you have power generated um, by being attached to the grid. You've got about 2,500 cubic feet of natural gas, 286 pounds of coal, Plus, you take in all the materials to produce the EV batteries, like we talked about the cobalt, the lithium carbonate, the neodymium, the copper, plus all the machinery and vehicles to mine and transport materials. Well, by the time an EV hits the showroom floor, it has produced 30 gallons of carbon dioxide. Compare that to a conventional car at 14,000. Um, gallons of carbon dioxide and that doesn't even take into factoring what's being done with the electric batteries that are having to be replaced every few years yep. and, and here's the thing I don't understand it was that Yanasa Ama was talking about that we had had like millions of buffalo well I, I'd actually hope to get better de better numbers on that but when before we settled America there were millions of buffalo roaming the plains and you know, just doing their thing and, and buffalo, like cows, fart. So there's the CO2 emissions. And we're now we've got, I think about a quarter, and like I said, I, I don't have the, the exact numbers, but about a quarter of the buffalo here, you know, with, with cows. And, you know, they're trying to get rid of cows because of the methane and all that. Well, you know, if they fed them a proper diet, they could probably right. eliminate a lot of that because Cows are not supposed to eat corn and grain. Yes, but we but Such, we have like, less cattle yeah. in this country now than we far, did in the seventies. Yep. Yeah. Right. Well, far less. Yeah. Far less, and then less bison. Far less. Far less bison. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we just don't. The, the carbon emissions that are being put out by cows and cow farts and cow burps, which they say is like two percent or something, like two percent. I, I think it's like two percent of the. Uh, 
gas emissions in uh, America. I mean, electricity is far, far worse at over 50%. But here's the thing I don't understand. Plants eat carbon dioxide, right? They convert that to oxygen that we breathe, right? I was just going to say, yeah. Right? So... It's it's like going to an all-you-can-eat buffet because if we're putting out more CO2, that thing behind us is just getting bigger and bigger. All right, Dr. Patrick Moore um, actually used to be the founder of Greenpeace, and I believe he ended his stint with Greenpeace in the 80s. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it was somewhere around the late 80s. Um, he's actually written um, a couple of books about this very topic. Um, a lot of the green community have kind of shunned him, um, have tried to create issues for him, but he talks a lot about um, the narrative and the agenda that's going around green energy and the money that uh, is being earned by specific people in leadership about this very topic and goes into a lot of the talking points and why they're not accurate. So if you're really interested in this, I absolutely recommend um, picking up um, Dr. Patrick Moore's books. Um, he is an ecologist. He knows this in and out. Um, but really, really good information for us to look at this and say, okay, what is really going on? And what do we really need to do to fix the planet? Y'all know we are regenerative farmers, right? Like we are doing our best to re repair our land. God has gifted us this planet. We should do our best to take care of it, right? And 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 be a blessing to the earth that, that we live on. Uh, but the narrative that's being sold to us isn't accurate and it's actually not necessarily good for the planet and in a lot of ways can actually harm the planet. So on this Earth Day, I just challenge you, let's, let's look at better ways of taking care of our planet and not fall into this, you know, control. Question everything. Question everything, yes, especially from our leaders. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but, and I know this is we're probably going to upset a lot of people with this. No, but. I, you know, and, and if you're upset... You know. well, there's nothing we can do. Look, I, we're just we're giving you some facts. You can look all this up yourself. Yep. Um, we're just trying to bring awareness. Yeah, exactly. And if you and if people bring up, well, all these scientists agree. Well, I want you to follow the money there too, because these people get grant money, and they're basically said say prove this so you can get this grant money. So mm -hmm. how? Um, what sort of looking Not for? Non bias. Uh, yes. How? Um, unbiased or are these reports really going to be so you know just food for thought on this earth day well, i just 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 to give proper credit my buddy meds in arizona my best friend in arizona uh he says you know it might not be the greatest but we've got to start somewhere and we totally agree you got to start somewhere yeah. yes but the issue is that they're saying that this is green and it's yeah. better for the planet exactly. and they're trying to force everybody into this that is my issue with right. it oh, I know. it I is know. not better for the planet and you but shouldn't I'm just, be just i'm looking yeah. at the other side of the story the, people, the viewers watching this yes. going going but we have to start yeah. somewhere and you're right yeah. This isn't yeah. where this isn't the place to start. Yeah, y'all. Germany survived this last winter because they had stored up a whole bunch of Russian oil. They just announced that their their three nuclear um, power plants were gone. Yep. Uh, I just hope that they're okay next winter. I hope it's a warm winter next winter. I mean, this in, in Sri Lanka, guys. There are real, real consequences for moving to these things too soon. Um, and uh, if we don't get a handle on this, it, 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 this. Things like Sri Lanka, what might hopefully does not happen, but will probably happen next winter in Germany. I, I just, I, you know. Okay, we're going to jump down into another rabbit hole. I know, I know. We gotta, <laughs> all we, right, y'all. we got to let you go. <laughs> Hope, but truly, happy Earth Day. You know, go go pick up some trash in the park or do something do something good for the, for the, uh, the environment. Start your garden. And pray. Pray for us. Pray for our country. Pray for our world. We're praying um, for you. Absolutely. So... Take care, everybody. God bless. We'll see you on the next video. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.